एडवर्टाइज किया वो ओके आउज बिल्लाहि मिनश शैतानिर रजीम बिस्मिल्लाहिर रहमानिर रहीम अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह नहमदुहु व नस्तईनुहु व नस्तगफिरुहु व नाउज बिल्लाहि मिन शुरूरि अनफुसिना व मिन सय्यआति अमालिना मन यहदीहिल्लाहु फला मुदिल्ला लहु व मन युदलिल फला हादिया लहु अशहदु अन ला इलाहा इल्लल्लाह वाहदा हु ला शरीक लहु व अशहदु अन मुहम्मदन अब्दुहु व रसूलुहु اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ربي زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير امين يا رب العالمين سو ان شاء الله سوره الدوحه going to cover today and uh, before we go there let's uh, review a bit what we what was said in the last uh, aya uh, sorry in the previous session so a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim hamim we know these are haruful muqatta'at uh, and uh, the meanings no one knows but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the implication is that we come to quran e pak with uh, humility wal kitab il mubin so this vow is qasam uh, over here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking oath on quran e pak and this is the beauty of uh, quran e pak so whenever you see all these haruful muqattat always we gonna find uh, and the glorification of uh, quran e pak after it so wal kitab il mubin so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking oath on quran e pak and saying that this is mubin mubin means the one who who itself is clear and it clarify things for others so subhanallah this is beautiful uh, uh, word used over here and we know that uh, even surah baqara starting uh, with uh, अलिफ लैम वैलिकल किताब लाफी सो देर इज नो डाउट अबाउट इट सो मैनी प्लेस इज इन कुरान पाक अल्लाह सुबहान तज टेलिंग अस दैट दिस कुरान पाक इज ऑल क्लियर इट इज फुल ऑफ अफेक्ट्स एंड इट इज फुल ऑफ ट्रूथ ट्रूथ फ्रॉम अल्लाह सुबहान तीज आर दर्ड्स ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान तो कम टू द कुरान विद आउट एनी डाउट so there is no doubt because when the, we do not have any doubt, when we have doubt about something we do not take that thing seriously right so that's why allah subhanahu wa taala in the very beginning uh, telling us that this kitab is mubin because this is the address to uh, quraish and quraish were in doubt about this quran e pak about uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uh, risala right so that's why it is uh, made very clear in the very beginning then inna anzalnahu fi lailatin mubaraka inna kunna munzirin so now uh, allah subhanahu wa taala is telling us when this quran pak uh, when this book is revealed so inna anzalnahu this uh, book is revealed in lailatil mubaraka we know lailatul qadr uh, is the another name for that lailatul uh, baraa baraa mean like uh, freedom because uh, on that day allah subhanahu wa taala give freedom uh, to people from hell fire so there are uh, many names for this uh, uh, night lailatul qadr and allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that uh, anzalna ho is very interesting word we discussed even last class uh, that uh, since this is not nazzalna and we know that quran e pak revealed uh, gradually it's not one go right but uh, over here anzal naizios which means one go so uh, and this is referring to the very first descent that happen from lohil mafus to baitul mamur uh, it is said that uh, allah subhanahu wa taala spoke quran twice once he spoke the quran and the kalam which was the very first creation uh, of allah subhanahu wa taala uh, 
uh, the Kalam wrote the whole Quran, and then it is preserved in Lohi Mahfuz. And from Lohi Mahfuz to Baitul Mamur, it descend on that Laylatul Qadr, and it was taught by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to Hazrat Jibrail Alaihissalam. So this is referring to the very first uh, descent that happened on the uh, Laylatul Qadr. Inna kunna muntirin, and this is the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He always warns, He always give warning, He never destroy, He never punish any uh, anyone unless the warning was already there or some um, uh, Rasul or some book or something was there. Um, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give punishment to anyone. So basically this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completing his hujja against people that on the day of judgment, no one can say that, okay, uh, we, uh, we didn't know about the message at all, right? quran e is there and going to remain till the end of the uh, day, inshallah. So inna kunna munzerin, so this is referring to the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. So in it, this ha is referring to uh, Laylatul Qadr, yufraku. So um, uh, the judgment or decree or uh, the execution of all these amars, what is going to happen in the whole year, it is uh, uh, like revealed on, uh, on angels, basically, uh, whatever is going to happen to different. Uh, uh, occasions and uh, throughout the year. And we know that uh, it is said uh, um, that there are many angels, right? They have uh, different responsibilities. Like we know that uh, uh, there is Malkul Maut, Israel, al Islam, and uh, his job is to take uh, 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 rule of people, mankind, right? So he is going to give an Asahi found that night the list of all the people he is going to take ru from them, right? And then there is an angel of uh, rain, winds, right? All these uh, 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 things. And then we have uh, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to send any calamity, that is Hazrat Jibrail al Islam's job. So different angels have different jobs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed all these job on these uh, angels on that day. So they, they are given some sahifa, they are given all these commandments, what is uh, they are going to do throughout the year. And uh, that is also very important that we think that uh, uh, 15 Shaban is the night when all these uh, commandments, when all these uh, decrees happens, right? So our risk, our health, our uh, who is going to die, who is going to live, who is uh, uh, going uh, like uh, who is going to born, right? All these things we think that uh, that is uh, uh, month of Shaban, fifteen Shaban. But we can see over here that uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is clearly saying that uh, that happened on Laylatul Qadr, which is a, a night of Ramadan. So this is a very wrong concept that we have. Uh, regarding uh, 15 Shaban. Then we have uh, Amram in Indina. Amram, we see that uh, this is uh, like Maful Mutlik. We can uh, think that Amarna Amram in Indina, right? So that means this, these matters are huge, right? So they are very important. So all these important mass, uh, uh, commandments, all these important decrees, and they are from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, obviously. And in Nakuna Mursilin, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that we are the one who sent Mursilin, and this Mursilin could be prophet, it could be books, it could be uh, even angels. So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that we are the one who, and these can be all these even Amar, all these commandments, and we are the one who are sending them. So uh, we can see that uh, all these. Uh, decrees are coming from the very high status from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not have any uh, kind of uh, uh, like uh, a, a constriction in our heart that, uh, okay, why this is happening? 
because first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is Amrin Hakim, right? So um, even though we are unable to see uh, if some difficulty is coming to us, right? So we don't see that what is blessing in it, but uh, we should have believed that this, uh, all these commandments, all these decrees are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is saying that they are um, like uh, he has hikmah, why he is doing that. Um, you know that uh, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love mankind and he want everyone to strive for his Jannah because uh, we already have our land in Jannah, right? Our house are booked over there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want everyone to strive for the, uh, their uh, land. But sometimes when people are lazy and they are not uh, working hard towards it, then what does Allah do? He just uh, uh, gives some little calamity, so just little kind of uh, jerk or li little shock. So maybe they can uh, turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So uh, this is what uh, we should uh, think whenever. Uh, some difficulty come on our way that this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want me to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it says, Rahmatam mir rabbik. So this is the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said. Inna hu hu was sami ul alim. And uh, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use sami and al alim over here? Why not other uh, attributes? Because we are saying that these Amar are not going to be very easy for us, right? So some, uh, some of uh, us are going to face some difficulties, some calamities, right? So th at that time, uh, uh, we are going to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is all hearing and he is all knowing. He already know, right? And he hear, even though uh, uh, like he know our feelings. Uh, before we say anything, he already know what we are going to say and what we are going to go, uh, we, we are going through. So no one knows better than him. We uh, turn towards people and we tell them our feelings, but they do not get hundred uh, percent what we are trying to say. They do not have uh, any concern. Uh, sometimes we regret when we share something with uh, uh, people. And we regret because sometimes they don't understand and even they say something that hurts us more or they might blame us that this is your fault. You should not uh, done this, right? So, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know your feelings. So we should, uh, uh, this is beautiful over here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is a sami and al alim then rabbi samawati wal ardi wa ma bainahuma in kuntum mukinin then again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, describing himself describing the rab the rab have six implication we uh, saw last class right so uh, he is the rab of the heaven and the earth wa ma bainahuma and whatever is in between so basically everything belongs to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the rab of everything in kuntum mukinin but uh, we need to have a certainty uh, conviction on that so and allah so it, that could be like uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, it could be a complaint too right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, since uh, it, uh, talking to Quraysh directly over here and indirectly to us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, you need to have a conviction for that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the rub of everything. Uh, then uh, these are the today's uh, ayat inshallah. La ilaha illa huwa yuhi wa yumit rabbukum wa rabbu abaikum ul awwalin. Balhum fi shakin yalabun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no deity but him, right? And he is the one who gives life. He is the one who gives death. And he is the, uh, your rub and the rub of your forefathers, uh, your uh, great grand uh, forefathers. Uh, he is the rub of everyone. Balhum fi shakin yalabun. But what is the condition of people? that they are 
in shak, they are in doubt. And when they are in doubt, yell aboon, then they are just enjoying themselves. They uh, doesn't look interested in this message. For Taqib, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, directly talking to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's saying that uh, for Taqib that uh, uh, you just uh, look in anticipation, like look forward, Yoma, the day, Tati, come, Samau, the sky, the sky would come, be uh, and this Tati, when it comes with Ba, it means brings. So, and by yourself, Tati mean uh, it could be attack or it could be come. So the sky would attack if there was not Ba, but with the Ba, we are going to uh, say that uh, um, and the sky would come. That's, uh, sorry, sky, the sky would bring because the T with Bav is bring. So the sky would bring what? Be Dukhan in Mubin. So a uh, smoke, and again, the smoke is going to be very uh, visible on the sky, and this is a kind of uh, uh, thick red smoke. Yakshan Nasa, and it will cover the mankind. Haza azabun alim, and they would uh, say that this is a very painful punishment. Rabba nakshif anna azab, azab, O Allah, you remove from us this azab, inna mu'minun. We are the believers. So they will cry out because that uh, is going to be very painful you know, experience for them, and they are going to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are mu'min. We are going to believe now, so please remove this uh, as a from us. Anna lahumul zikra wa qadja ahum rasul mubin. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, showing amazement or uh, uh, like uh, he's, uh, uh, it is called tobi and inkar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, okay, how is it possible that I send prophet the prophet was living among you right and he was the best personality ever living among you and uh, when he was giving you message even the message was uh, like very impressive they were very impressed by quran Park, right but still they were not believing so how come that zikra this punishment this little punishment is uh, uh, going to um, um, make you change your ways. So basically, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not uh, like a, he can, he know by his knowledge that even though they are saying it, but it's not going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that already I sent Rasulun Mubin and you didn't mend your ways and now uh, just due to this small punishment, you think that you're going to mend your ways? So this is a question or amazement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now let's see uh, our ayat in detail. Okay, Auz billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. So, la ilaha illa huwa. So, there is no deity illa except huwa. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yuhi, he gives life. Wa yumitu, and he gives death. Rabbu kum, your rab. Wa rabbu, and rab. Abai kum ulawalin. Rab of your forefathers. Awalin, the very first one. So, now... Uh, grammatical analysis, la ilaha, we know and this la, right? So this is la nafiatu, lil jins. And this ilaha is the isam of la over here. And uh, a little review of la nafiatu, lil jins, that uh, uh, if you have la, and after la, you have an isam, which is light, and it is nasab in status, then this is la nafiyatul lil jins. And what does la nafiyatul lil jins mean? 
as the name is saying that this uh, it negates all the genes all the species like uh, uh, in the world of deities in the world of gods there is no god but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in the world of whoever people worship there is no one but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worthy of worship so this is what it means so it negate all kinds of uh, species uh, uh, in whatever category we are talking about so over here we are talking about ila so there is no deity there is no worthy of worship but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then illa we called it harfu hasr and then huwa huwa we can call whenever we have la nafia we are going to have uh, its ism and then its khabar so la ilaha so la this is la nafia ilaha is the ism of la la nafia and then this huwa we can take it as a khabar so this is the khabar of la nafia to lil jins so this is basically Uh, the sentence by itself la ilaha illahu there is no deity but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it says yuhyi wa yumit so yuhyi um, now this la ilaha illallah the uh, grammarian are saying that basically this sentence is a khabar right and uh, if this is a khabar then where is the mubtada so basically they are saying that we can think that the word allah is mubtada over here which is hidden which is masuf so we can say allahu la ilaha illah so allah is there is no deity but him so this huwa is referring to the word allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is one implication and when we say say that this uh, there is mubtada over here so this uh, then la ilaha illallah this is going to be our khabar number 1 and then we can see you he wa you meet so now he is the one and there is no wow right so again that can be sentence by itself so you he wa you meet uh, this you he first of all it can be the hal of hua or it can uh, if we are uh, uh, yeah okay so we we uh, we can take this uh, yuhi as a hal of hua because this is perfect uh, and this yuhi has uh, hua in it and then it is going back to uh, hua and uh, why you meet this is uh, basically motufun ala and we know that yuhi is our fil mudariya this is family for uh, for ahya basically that should be ahya ya ahya ya because there are you two years but we say ahya and then you ye you so literally it is you ye you but to make it easy this is you ye so ahya you ye this is our family four and then uh, you me to is basically amata again family four amata you me to and we can see that uh, both are weak words because we see two yas over here so this is double weak we can say and this is uh, uh, amata has one weakness because there is uh, alif over there uh, and then we can think that okay uh, the word allah was our mubtada right and that was our khabar number 1 so now you see why you meet we can take it as a khabar number 2 make sense right so allah who you hear you may we can think right so that is uh, uh, like uh, this is one implication then rabbukum so this is our uh, uh, we can take this sentence as uh, um, one own sentence it's own right because there is no word so no atab so that sentence can be by itself if we are taking it by its, itself then we can uh, we gonna say rabbukum your rabb wa rabbu abaikum ul awwalin so this is our uh, um, uh, mubtada if we are taking it uh, its own sentence so rabbukum mubtada wa rabbu abaikum ul awwalin so first of all uh, this is the chain of mubtada over here right 
So Rabbukum is Idafa fragment, Wow came, which is a tav, and Rab of your forefathers, right? So this is the chain of Idafa over here. And then Avalin. So Avalin is the Sifa of Abai. How it is? Um, you can say that Abai look like it is uh, uh, not uh, proper because there is no Al. But uh, Avalin has uh, Al over here. And Ava, Luna Avalina, right? So how come? Uh, uh, we can see that uh, and this Kum, first, uh, first of all, if we are saying that this uh, have Al and it does not have Al, then we know that uh, Idafa fragment is always uh, mudaf is uh, uh, proper when it's mudaf ilahi is proper right so kum is uh, mudaf ilahi which is proper so that's is going to make aba uh, proper right and uh, uh, we are going to take avalin and abai so they are jar in status avaluna avalina avalina right so they are matching in four properties so they are sifa mosuf together. And now, if we are taking uh, the sentence by itself, then what's going to happen? Rabbukum wa rabbu abaykum ulawalin. So they are all changed together. This is one statement, like uh, one bucket. If this is one bucket and this is rafa, so the first rafa is uh, mostly muptada, right? So this is our muptada. If we are taking it by itself, not muptada mokhar, muptada mokhar uh, I put because uh, if we are saying that la ilaha illallah, yuhi wa yumit, so basically this whole sentence we can think that uh, this is the khabar uh, of this muptada. So, rabbukum wa rabbu abaykumul awalin is our muptada. And then la ilaha illa huwa yuhi wa yumid is the khabar of it. This is another way to look. Uh, and what I was saying that, okay, if we are taking it by itself, then this is just muptada, right? Because they are all changed together. If this is muptada, uh, then where is the khabar? Right? So um, basically not muptada, sorry, we can take it as a and we can think that uh, the huwa is mahzoof over here. So uh, huwa rabbukum wa rabbu abaykum ulawalin. So this huwa can be our muqtada and then we can take this as a khabar. Okay. And another way is that we can think that, uh, remember we, have, we imagine that uh, there is uh, uh, Allah. The word Allah is uh, mahzoof over here. So Allahu la ilaha illa huwa. So this is khabar number one. Yuhi wa yumid, khabar number two. And then Rabbu wa Rabbu abai kumul awalin, khabar number three. So and, and, and it, this is also one implication. So let me uh, say one more time because uh, it's look like all jumbled. So first of all, very first thing, we can imagine that the word Allah is mahzoof over here. So that is our muqtada. And then we have la ilaha illahu. So this is our khabar number one. And then we can think that, okay, you hear what you mean? Since there is no wow, no ataf, right? So this is sentence by itself. That is our khabar number two for the same muqtada Allah. And then the third, rabbukum wa rabbu abaykum ulawalin. This is our khabar number three. So this is one thing. Then we can think that, okay, uh, that Rabbukum wa Rabbu Abai Kumula Valin, this is basically Muqtada Mu'akhar. And the khabar of it is what? La ilaha illahu. Okay, so these are the two uh, implications we can remember. I hope uh, it's not uh, confusing. So uh, I put even over here. So we are saying that Allah, Allahu, la ilaha illahu. So uh, this is our muqtada and la ilaha illahu is our khabar. And then we can think 
हुआ यू ही व यू मेद और अल्लाह हु यू ही व यू मेद सो बोथ वे इज फाइन एंड दिस वे वी आर टेकिंग दीज सेंटेंसेस बाय देम सेल्फ सो वी आर नॉट कनेक्टिंग देम Uh, with any other sentence rather we are just taking by themselves so this is uh, one sentence who are you here why you meet this is our second sentence who are rabbukum wa rabbu abaikum wa lawalin this is our third sentence so i have given you three implication of grammatical analysis okay i hope uh, it's all clear ask me if you, uh, it is clear uh, or if you have any question uh yes sir i had yes um uh, it uh, sounded perfect actually and i got alhamdulillah most of the thing but i was just thinking this just that uh, rabbukum and rabbu abaukum all this isn't us uh, can we call a sifa of allah to like you yeah. me you me to and all is a sifa of allah right but where is uh, the word allah Uh, well, that's mazuf right that's what we are assuming that it should be allah la ilaha illa right yeah even it can go you know in the previous uh, ayah there was uh, um, there was ayat right talking right. about uh, rab so maybe they yeah. can go back to that right yeah yeah so they can go back to their like uh, no but they were um Uh, they were in uh, jar in status right so rabbi samawati so hmm. they, they this right. rabbi and this rabbi they are basically are connected because uh, uh, they are have same status yes. but since yes. this is rabbu so they are not uh, having same status hmm. so but still they are talking about rab so not sifa but uh, uh Like Rabbi. they're saying, Allah is the one. He is your Rabb, my Rabb, and He is the one gives life and death. So I think all, but I don't know. Yeah, no. yeah. You can you can say that. No harm in it. Yeah. But uh, these three implications are good enough, right? So yeah. Make, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So they are making sense. Alhamdulillah. So these are the three ways to look uh, grammatically to these ayat. So Inshallah, now. moving on okay oh. i put bye uh, yaki so uh, for uh, these uh, conjugation for uh, these ahya and uh, uh, amata so you uh, you guys can see these are weak verbs so basically this is ahya ya or yuhyi yu so these are called a uh, weak verb and uh, so ahya and then it uh, comes to huma it will become ahya why ahya because you can see that uh, actually it should be ahya ya right ahya and when we are making it to huma that will become ahya ya so when it is ahya ya because uh, so this is ahya right and now when i'm bringing huma huma i need to put uh, the alif of huma right so that will become ahya ya because th- basically this is ya to we have two ya's over here so now and with uh, this ya i i need to put alif so ahya ya and now when we have two yas then idgham gonna happen right we need to merge them together so when we are merging them together and when we see that whenever we have weak letter and weak letter has uh, uh, harika and the other letter does not have it has kun so sometimes the switch happens so basically and this uh, uh, fatha is going over here and this sukoon is going to come over here so they are going to switch their harakas and when this happen so it will become what a now this uh, ha has fatha right 
and then we are merging two yas together. So it will become a hayya. Okay, so this is how it, uh, the only problem is in, uh, in our huma. The rest is uh, going to kind of stay the same. So a hayya, then a yaw, and then a hayat, a hayata, and then a hayayna, and uh, basically the rest uh, is, does not have any problem. And then arada, uh, which is uh, same like amata, and uh, it looked like uh, very regular. I don't see any problem over here. So these are the conjugation for these words. And then I put, uh, just as a reminder, about la nafia to lil jins, right? So there are four reasons. Long time ago, when you guys were very young, right? So we did that, uh, la nafia to lil jins. So this is uh, a little revision for you guys. And again, this is the example of La Nafia to Lil Jin. So you are going to read um, by yourself. And now, even though we did that uh, in our Surat Nu, uh, the word Ila came over there, right? And we went in a lot of details. So I just put uh, over here as a reminder because it's always good when we um, uh, re revise things because um, this word is very important and it has so many implication and it is uh, beautiful. So uh, let's uh, review a bit over there. I'm gonna go very quickly, not uh, in uh, very detail. You uh, rest, you can uh, guys can read to yourself. So this uh, ila, as uh, some scholar says, that basically this is the isam murakkab, meaning it has two isam in it. So al and ila. So this is the murakkab. This is the uh, the word that is made up of two uh, words or two letters or whatever. Uh, you, you can say al plus ila. So al plus ila makes Allah, according to many scholars. But uh, when we say al and ila together, uh, then we know that uh, as a uh, grammar of, uh, uh, sorry, as a student of uh, Arab, uh, Arabic grammar that there are going to be some problems because we cannot put al with every isam in every context, right? So there are certain contexts when al is not allowed. And uh, the example is uh, we say, when we call someone, we can say ya waladu, right? Uh, Ya waladu, we can say, uh, but uh, if I want to put al with this waladu, right? So then I cannot say ya al waladu. What I need to do, I need to bring a yuha. Okay, we see that in Quran a lot. Ya yuhalazina amanu, ya yuhalazina kafaru, right? So uh, kafiruna, sorry. So we see that whenever we have al, then we need to bring a yuha with it. By itself, we cannot call ya al kafirun. That would be wrong. We cannot say ya al waladu. That would be wrong. So we need to bring uh, a yuha with it. But uh, we always keep. We say ya Allah, right? We we don't say ya yuha Allah. We we don't say that. So, so basically that tells that uh, this word is uh, beyond the uh, um, Arabic language, right? And uh, it says that this word is very, very uh, um, like uh, old word. Even many prophets who were not speaking uh, um, Arabic, they didn't know Arabic, but still they were using that word. So this is, uh, and even in, um, uh, in some uh, Christian scriptures, you, uh, this word is find, uh, found over there. So basically, uh, the uh, uh, like the grammarian or uh, and the scholar think that uh, this word is uh, beyond the uh, language of uh, Arabic. And then another thing is uh, that uh, we, uh, when we learn Tajweed, we know that Lam is very light word, 
right? Uh, we say la ilaha, right? We, we don't say law. So that is very light word. Lam is light word. But when we say the word Allah, we don't say Allah, we say Allah. So we make it the uh, tafkhim, we make it heavy. So this is another uh, indication that uh, this word might not be from Arabic. So these are the two things that uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, saying that uh, this word is uh, beyond the uh, uh, like boundaries of uh, uh, Arabic language. Then, Uh, the word Allah operates differently. It is a proper name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. So we say that when we say the word Allah, this is basically the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other are Rahman, Ar Rahim, Ar Sami, Al Alim. These are all the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholar says that all his uh, attributes we know only 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names are infinite. There is no limit. Uh, this is our problem or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell uh, all of his names to anyone, right? So, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infinite names. So, uh, and all these names are in this word Allah. But when we say, Ila, so what we are going, we, we do, we just confine this name. Uh, if we are saying that this is uh, Al plus uh, Allah, then we are confining this name only with the Mabud because we say there is no Ilah, there is no worthy of worship, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So we are kind of uh, uh, limitizing this uh, word if we are saying that this is uh, uh, Al plus uh, Allah. So Allah knows better. Uh, uh, but this is what uh, uh, it looks like uh, uh, when we say uh, the word Allah. This is uh, kind of uh, uh, does not have any limits. So this is uh, um, uh, um, the word Allah is uh, grander than Ila. And even we, when we say the word Alhamdulillah, so we are not, uh, uh, we have thank this, uh, the, um, the word Allah has thanks and praise in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And basically we are thanking for his wisdom, for his uh, seeing, for his uh, hearing, for his might. And every name we can think of, uh, 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 think of uh, is being captured in the word Allah, right? So basically, uh, this is what uh, uh, we are discussing over here, that the uh, um, most of the scholar think that this is uh, Al plus uh, Ila, but uh, look like uh, this is more than uh, Ila, and uh, we should not uh, confine or limitize this uh, name uh, just with uh, this uh, Ila. And uh, the word Ila is important for us. Why? because basically this is our shahada, right? So we really need to know about this word. So now, uh, when we say la ilaha illallah, basically it is, we are saying there la mabud, illallah, there is no mabud, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la maqsud, illallah, so our goal or whatever we are heading towards or what we want is only maqsud. Maqsud is from maqsad, right? So our maqsad is only Allah, matloob, our desire, our, we, we want Allah. So all these uh, uh, like scholar put that uh, these are few things that we can think when we are saying la ilaha, but we have, basically we just, uh, confined it to the Mabud only. And then we know that uh, the word Ila is a master and master is uh, unlimited, right? Nouns are unlimited. And master, uh, what are the uh, nouns? Nouns would be some file, maful, and uh, master. 
and uh, we, we say that uh, we, uh, we have writer. So writer is some file, right? Speaker is some file. Writing, this is our master. Speaking, this is our master. And we know that uh, um, when we say ilm, and then we have the word muallim. So ilm is master and muallim is, uh, is some file. So ilm, what do you think? Muallim is, uh, has more knowledge or ilm has more knowledge, right? Muallim has limited knowledge, right? And ilm is knowledge itself. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, the word ilah is master. Right, so basically it is uh, hinting that uh, uh, like, uh, okay, the master is knowledge by definition, Mollim's knowledge is limited, but knowledge itself is a concept, so it is unlimited. The word illa, uh, the word illa is a master and it has uh, unlimited implication. So the illa, the idea of worship itself, right, so when we say, Ila, this is the entity of worship. The idea of worship itself is Ila, and this is absolute uh, entity of worship. And then uh, 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 this is the conjugation, Alaha Ya Lahu, which is Bab Fateha family. And in this family, it gives the meanings of uh, to worship or to enslave. So when we say um, ila, so the enslavement comes in it. Then uh, we can find this word in Fatiha and Samia family. And uh, with Samia, when it comes with ila, ila, which is like uh, going towards this is her fujar, that means to find a peace and contentment in something. Turn to someone when you are sad in calamity. So Raja Aila. So whenever there is a calamity, we turn towards someone and this entity is Ila. And then uh, Aliha Samia family is also implied amazement. So the amazement, so we should be uh, like amazed only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Overwhelmed. Tahayyara, so tahayyara, amazement. So amazement is uh, also uh, one of the implication of ila. So ila is the object of uh, worship. It is someone you turn to, someone you are desperate for, the entity you turn to in times of calamity and uh, desperation. So uh, we can see that uh, how uh, like uh, 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 like huge or unlimited it is in in its meaning, but uh, unfortunately, we just uh, take it as a mabud, which is not justice to this word. And then, uh, aliha who, when we say aliha who, uh, with the pronoun who there, so that is the pronoun mufulun bihi next to it, so that gives the meaning of hafiza or anjaha, so meanings he, the one who guard you, the one who rescue you, the one who protects you. So everything is covered in this word, right? So Ila is the entity worthy of worship. We turn uh, towards him to find peace. We turn toward him in desperation. We turn towards him for protection and the entity we are amazed by him. So all these meanings are in the word Ila. Subhanallah. And then um, uh, root letters again. Waliha. Uh, from Waliha it becomes Ila, basically. And the original word is actually Waliha, but was interchangeable uh, with Ila. So it got interchanged with Ila. And the original surf is uh, uh, waliha, waliha ya lahu or waliha yu lahu. So waliha ya lahu 
बब फतेह फैमिली एंड वलीहा यू लाहू बब नासरा फैमिली सो इवन इट इज इट एग्जिस्ट इन बब नासरा टू एंड फ्रॉम दैट इट बिकम्स विला एंड फ्रॉम विला इट बिकम्स इला टू फॉर द ईजमेंट ऑफ योर टंग and again the meanings to be excited to be crazy uh, in someone's love so worthy of uh, love is only allah subhanahu wa taala and if we know him the problem is we don't know him that's why we don't fall in love with him if we know him then definitely we are going to go crazy about him so being a most uh, emotional for someone the object of worship overwhelmed shocked impressed by his greatness right so again uh, it is all about the knowledge we need to know about allah subhanahu wa taala then we are going to be impressed by him then we are going to be crazy in love with him so you will turn to vila which later became ila so basically it was vila and then uh, it became ila from there and then waliha is lazim and mutaddi so both uh, uh, way we can look at uh, this word and it means to guard oneself and rescue someone and then uh, liahun and iliahun so another uh, saying is that uh, Uh, not vilahun but iliahun from iliahun it become ilahun so we can see the struggle of uh, all these scholars and uh, hard work of them that how they look into this word and uh, how we can see that how different is this word that uh, uh, they are kind of uh, uh, like uh, stretching their heads to find out uh, what is originally it is and uh, um uh, like look, we can see their struggle so that tells us that uh, what is the scope of this word it looks like uh, it is really beyond any language so la la yalahu again nasara family and it also gives the meaning of uh, uh creator or created so um, it has the meaning of uh, creating or creator to and then from bab darab a family so you um, we can see that almost in every uh, like clan we can find this word and uh, it means to be high and to be elevated and then uh, just dictionary over here to read this is again very beautiful we can see that uh, uh, when someone is uh, very uh, like uh, sad sad is like very uh, little word when somebody has a big shock and he lose his mind this is the love we can uh, fall into with allah subhanahu wa taala but again what's the problem because we don't know him so what should our goal that we need to know our rab then we are going to fall in love with him so this is beautiful and these are all uh, the uh, vila or ila in it when we say la ilaha illallah what does that mean so we say there is no such thing as excitement so nothing should excite us but allah subhanahu wa taala so there is no such excitement or there is no entity that can amaze us but allah subhanahu wa taala so actually no worship has ever happened but to allah subhanahu wa taala and for allah subhanahu wa taala so absolutely there is no refuge or excitement love obsession except for allah subhanahu wa taala there is no one at all we can turn to in sadness but to allah subhanahu wa taala people do worship uh, to other people uh, other people or other things right 
but that does not count as worship in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So la ilaha is referring to the fact as well as to the command because la ilaha means there is no deity. And uh, if I ask you, there is no smoking here, right? So but, uh, this is a command. So basically, la ilaha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us that uh, uh, we do not need to turn to anyone but towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is absolutely no ilah but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is making a, a statement of fact and commanding us to get our act together and worship him, turn to him, have obsession about him, amazed by him only and understand the relation of uh, Rab, Malik and Abd. And then we know that uh, Ila all, uh, also uh, is uh, uh, referred to an entity which is unquestionable. In quran e Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that no one can ask him what he is doing. So no one can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's authority, right? So this is the uh, also uh, in the word of uh, Ila. And then Ila is used in the quran e Pak. Have you seen someone whose Ila is uh, his vain desires? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is uh, like a kind of uh, uh, asking us that uh, um, uh, like maybe pointing out people, I should say, pointing out some people who just take their vain desires as Ila. So Ila over here meaning like they are worshipping their vain desires, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is kind of uh, uh, pointing out so we do not be uh, such people who take their vain desires as Allah because uh, uh, in our age and time, uh, Alhamdulillah, as a Muslim, we do not worship uh, any idols or uh, anything else, right? But unfortunately, uh, the shaitan has spread his um, uh, like his uh, trick or his net for us in other ways so he made us to do shir in many different ways now today's shirk is very totally different than the you know, old age time right so today we are so indulged in, with our families we are so indulged with our careers we are so indulged in our um, in our studies, even students, uh, like we see our kids, uh, sometimes they are so indulged in their studies, they don't care about uh, learning deen, they don't care about salahs, they don't care about uh, learning uh, deen or anything, right? And even parents, they are crazy about uh, the career of uh, uh, their kids. So they don't care if they are... Uh, 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 learning anything about deen or no, who cares about deen these days, right? So basically, uh, these are our vain desires that we have uh, uh, turned into ila, uh, which is very scary. Um, again, that and that uh, can be the type of shirk, right? So when, uh, uh, like, instead of uh, giving time or to Allah subhanahu wa taala, when there is salah time. We are busy in our uh, worldly stuff and we are ignoring the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And even though if we pray, we just give um, two, three times to our salah and the rest again, we are uh, busy with other things. So we are ignoring big time, uh, the uh, like uh, turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or remembering him. And uh, uh, most of our uh, life is revolving around uh, our desires. Earning, 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 career, 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 family, 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 kids, 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 right? So this is all our tasbi all day. And the, um, it has become our uh, lifestyle, right? And uh, that can be also a type of uh, shirk because we are uh, not giving the uh, uh, right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah make us uh, uh, the people who really uh, like uh, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know him and uh, uh, fall in love with him, with the true love. 
Uh, okay, moving on, inshallah. So this is uh, ayah number nine now. Balhum fi shakin yalabun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying bal, rather, whom they are, fi in shak, uh, doubt, yalabun, amusing themselves, playing around, enjoying. So uh, this is a direct uh, uh, talk to uh, Quraysh because they were in doubt about uh, the message. They were do in doubt about uh, uh, the messenger, right? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying that they are in doubt and yalabun and they are amusing themselves, whatever uh, their previous lifestyle is. They so they are not ready to make any changes, right? They are not. Uh, ready to accept this Quran, they are not ready to accept this message and this messenger. So now, Bal is uh, Harfu Idrab. What is uh, Harfu Idrab mean? So the word Idrab literally means to reject or turn away. So this Bal can be of two kinds, Bal Ibtali and Bal Intakali. So Bal Ibtali, from uh, batil, right? So batil means falsehood. So bal ibtali mean reject what is said before it. So we are rejecting something when there is bal ibtal. And then there could be bal intikal. So bal intikal is uh, when the topic is changed or shifted from the previous topic or idea. So over here, what do you think? What kind of bal is that? So this is bal ibtali because uh, um, uh, they were invited to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that he is the ilah, he is the rab, right? And he is the, um, um, uh, like, munzerin, the one who is giving you warning. So turn toward, uh, towards him, but what is their condition? They are in shock, right? So this is uh, uh, like bal uh, ibtal because they are rejecting what is said before. So bal hum fi shakin yalabun. So hum over here is our muqtada uh, and fi shakin is our MBK and then yalabun is our khabar and this is hal for hum. So very easy and alhamdulillah. And then uh, yal abun, it is laiba yal abu bab samia, and then laban and laibun, and then uh, it is also available in uh, bab fataha. So laaba yal abu. So in both uh, in both bab, we can find this word yal abun. And then when there is doubt, it affects the importance of matter. Right, so they were uh, given very important matter to turn to. Right, the prophet was given the Quran Park uh, is uh, uh, revealing on them. Right, Allah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, uh, reciting the ayat of Quran, giving them reminder left and right, but uh, they are not taking uh, um, uh, this message into consideration. Why? because they are in doubt. So that is very scary, right? So when you are in doubt, obviously it affects the importance of matter. You're not gonna take any heat when you are in doubt. So very first thing is that we, do, we should not have any doubt about it. We should not have doubt about our deen. We should not have doubt about quran -e Park. We should not have doubt about uh, validity of uh, our deen, right? So this is really important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, why their attitude is uh, uh, um, uh, that way because they are in doubt. So if there is warning about a tsunami, even though if I don't believe in it, still I can't or I should not joke around it, right? Logically, I should verify it. It is stupid to say, I know there is tsunami warning, but I don't care. I will not verify it, 
and I will not do whatever I want to. So basically that was their attitude. Allah, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is warning them that the punishment is on its way. The day of judgment is on its way. Mend your ways. But what they are doing, they are joking around about it, right? They are not taking it seriously. So all this hellfire day of judgment are pretty heavy conversation, but if we don't take seriously, then it becomes fiction and very entertaining topic to talk about. So because of their doubts, people mock and make fun of serious matter or because they are non-serious about something, make them joke about it. So it's like vice versa. So when you are in doubt, you're gonna make fun of some something, right? And when you are non-serious about something, then you are going to uh, make fun of uh, uh, the important thing. So being in doubt affects the importance of the fact. So basically this is the very brief message in this uh, ayah. Okay, now ayah number 10. فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَعْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِتُخَانِمْ مُبِينَ So now this fa over here is called fa fasiha. Okay, let me, sorry, translate first. So فَرْتَقِبْ mean watch out like uh, you uh, look forward or you just uh, see in anticipation. Yoma for that day, ta'ti. Uh, and tati with by as I said, meaning bring. So bring samau, the sky, the sky would bring biduhanin, the uh, smoke, mubin, the invisible, uh, sorry, the visible one. So now this fa over here is uh, fa fasiha, and uh, I will explain in a bit what is the fa fasiha mean, and then. Irtaqib. Irtaqib is from Rakiba Yarqabu Rakban Fahua Rakibun. And we have the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rakib. So Rakib is the one who is watching you over. Right? And for Takib, when it is going to family eight, it is like uh, really you are looking forward for something. So you know that when there is some election going on or some sports going on or some uh, like uh, this kind of entertainment, then people go crazy. They are watching every second, every minute, the score and even the election, right? So basically this is irtiqab. So you are looking in anticipation for something. Right, you you don't want to miss out anything. So basically, this is what uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, don't worry about their attitude. You just look. So look for what uh, for the day when the the sky itself will bring a uh, smoke which is going to be very visible. So now. Um, Okay, we were doing the Arab. Okay, so now Farta keep is our family eight. And this is Fail Amar, Failu uh, is Anta. And Yoma is our Mafulun Bihi. And then Ta'ti is our Fail Mudaria, Hia. And why Hia? Because uh, uh, it is referring to sky. So Sama'u. Uh, as we remember, Arab said so. This is uh, uh, feminine. So, and then uh, somehow is the file, and be uh, mubin is our jar majur plus sifa musu fragment. So, and this is a warning to the people of Quraysh by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is told to wait in anticipation or eagerly. Uh, if the car means you are really hoping for something to be changed. So Rakib is one who watch over you. So as I give the example of this election, okay, so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, uh, 
uh, is told that wait until the sky itself attack on them or bring them with the Dukhan Mubin with a clear, strange smoke. So Dukhan is dark red smoke. And there are two opinions about it. Uh, one uh, is that, uh, that this dark red smoke will appear in the sky and it will remain there for 40 days before the day of judgment. And that is the opinion of uh, Abdullah bin Umar. And uh, Hadith and Ibn Kathir even confirms that, true, that this is a true opinion. And uh, it is one of the uh, 10 signs of the day of judgment. We know the many signs of the day of judgment. And then the uh, Dajjal, Dabba, and Dukhan. So these are few of them. And the second opinion is that uh, Abdullah bin Masood said uh, that it already happened. That is a smoke that occurred due to the sphere draft in Makkah at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when we know that when there is a drought, then winds take over and all the dirt and, and fly like a smoke in the air. So uh, he's saying that this is uh, and um, the smoke is referring to. Or in the desert, when there is dr uh, drought, sarab can be seen due to heat and uh, water evaporation, right? And it caused like a steam, uh, look like smoke. So this is what uh, uh, Abdullah bin Masood said. And then Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know throughout the Quran e uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uh, uh, kind of uh, give a uh, small punishment uh, to any people to fix their ways, right? So before Allah SWT sent a big punishment, he always gives small punishment. So basically, uh, it is said that that was the small punishment for uh, Quraysh to open their eyes. So, and we know that Musa al-Islam was given nine signs, right? Uh, and Bani Israel, uh, so Bani Israel can get their act together. Uh, and this is mentioned a few surahs before this surah Dukhan. And we know that uh, Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing people with a small punishment. So they turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the visions supporting the second opinion. And Allah knows better and best. Okay, so now uh, Fafasiha. So Fafasiha, as the name says, it is used to convey a message in an eloquent, but in a brief way. In uh, uh, Arabic, there is uh, some phrase, it's called Khairul Kalami, Ma Kalla Wadalla. So the best of kalam, the best of speech is ma, what is kalla, little, like less words, vadalla, but it is making its point clear. Uh, and this is balaga point. So the best of speech is what convey the message in a short few words, but clarify it in best way. So the Prophet Muhammad is told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let them be and do what they are doing and wait for the day when the smoke will bring forth a visible smoke. And uh, sorry, the sky will bring. And they have uh, rejected you as a prophet, rejected Quran as the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the ayat and signs shown to them. So they are in doubt. So let them be until they see the consequences. So their rejection and crimes are already mentioned in the previous ayat, right? So this fa is used, their crimes are not repeated, but this fa is indicating everything they did and rejected. So they rejected Mursaleen, they are not mukinin on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in doubt about this message and messenger, so Far Fasiha is pointing out these crimes without saying uh, all these uh, words, right? So this Far basically 
has all these uh, uh, what they are rejecting right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not repeating himself just he used this fa and this fa is uh, saying the whole story another example why is this taska musa li qaumihi when hazrat musa alaihissalam asked for water li qaumihi for his people faqulna so we said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said idrib you uh, hit bi asaka with the staff al hajj uh, the stone or the rock fan fajarat so then gush out min who from it isna tashra the 12 uh, fountains now uh, this fan fajarat fan fajarat so gush out so now this fa is also fa fasiha how So another example from Quran e Pag in this ayah Surah Bakra ayah six three Hazrat Musa alayhi salam asked for water to Allah subhanahu wa taala right for Bani Israel and he was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa taala to strike with his staff on a rock. When he did that, twelve springs of water gushed forth. So now fun fajarat this fa is fa fasiha. it is indicating that musa alaihi salam hit the rock and then 12 springs gush out so allah subhanahu wa taala did not repeat it sentence that musa hit it so did allah subhanahu wa taala said that uh, uh, musa hit the rock and then fun fajarat happened no right so this fa is telling us that he hit the rock and then these 12 springs come out right so this fa is basically uh, is uh, uh, like uh, less words are used but this is what it meant right so allah subhanahu wa taala did not uh, repeat it the sentence that musa hit it and then uh, uh, these uh, uh, fountains come out rather he just used the fa which is fulfilling the purpose so this is uh, you will see throughout the quran and uh, this fa fasiha so that is basically um, just this fa is uh, indicating um, many things that happen so and allah subhanahu wa taala is using less words to uh, like what whatever is already said allah subhanahu wa taala is not repeating it and just fa is used to kind of uh, give the story what happen okay aya number 11 yaksha nasa hada azabun alim so yaksha um, mean it covered so what is uh, what is this it referring to the smoke so yaksha nasa this smoke will cover and hada azabun alim this is uh, painful punishment so what is happening over here so this uh, allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that this smoke will cover the mankind and they would cry out that this is a very painful punishment as uh, i said in the last class that uh, this smoke um it's not going to affect much to the believers believers just feel would feel like uh, having flu but the disbelievers they will inhale this uh, uh, smoke and uh, then it will come out from their ears from their nostrils from uh, from their eyes even and it will burn their head and they will be like uh, they would blow like a balloon and they will walk like a drunk man so it will affect them a lot according to uh, um, some ahadith so now uh, yaksha this is filun mudariya failuhu huwa which is referring to smoke an nas is our mafulun bihi hadha azabun alim sentence by itself so they would say these, these are their words so the haza is our mubtada and azabun alim is our khabar and this is the sifa and then washiya yaksha 
Uishabatun Fahua Vashin, this is Bab Basamiya, and then we have Vasha Yakshu, which is Bab Nasara. And when it comes to Bab Nasara, it means to come to someone, uh, it, to come to someone or some place. So Vasha means to come to someone or uh, to some place. And then we can see that. Uh, uh, present tense is used, which is uh, referring that it will happen, right? So that is supporting the uh, first opinion. So this smoke will cover the people. And as I said that uh, uh, it will not affect much to the believers, but uh, uh, the disbelievers would be very in pain and they would cry that this is very painful punishment. Ayah number 12. Rabba Nakshif Anna Anna Al Adaba Inna Muminun. So they would say, Rabbana, our Rabb, Ikshif Anna, you remove from us, remove from us what? Al Adaba, this Adab, Inna, indeed we are Muminun, we are believers. So now, what's going on over here? So they are so desperate that even ya is not used, right? So they rub, rubbana. So now they are crying out towards Allah. So this is what whenever calamity hit, we turn to towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? So rubba nakshifanna. So they are requesting, they are pleading, they are begging to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you remove this. A painful punishment from us uh, and uh, in Namumino, now they are saying that we are going to believe. So um, um, now they are kind of uh, uh, convinced that uh, they would believe. And then, um, okay, this drought was so severe that people of the crash were compelled to eat dry bones. And uh, it is narrated that uh, Quraysh came to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and then they pleaded him to remove this punishment. Like they pleaded uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he remove this punishment from them. And uh, from them same as Bani Israel. We know that uh, uh, that happens before in the time of Musa Islam. Bani Israel, they were afflicted with the nine different uh, kind of calamity and every time they were coming to Hazrat Musa Islam and uh, pleading him, requesting him that you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this punishment. And uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed that punishment, what happened? They didn't believe, they go back because their promise was that, okay, remove this punishment, we are going to believe you. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the punishment, they were back to their ways. So basically it is said that the same thing, uh, if we take the second opinion that it already happened to the crash, then uh, basically it is the uh, same thing they are asking that remove and we are uh, convinced now. And that happens in our, uh, uh, these days too, right? Imagine we are traveling in a, in a plane, enjoying our movie or video games or whatever is available in the plane, right? People are so indulged in it. They just sit in the plane and they are so in, like into uh, watching all that stuff, right? As they just come for that. Now, what happened if suddenly there is uh, uh, turbulence, everyone would leave everything aside and praying whatever uh, one can remember to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, remove this uh, musibah from us. And then as soon as the pilot announced that everything is fine, what's gonna happen? People right away go back to their ways, right? So this is uh, kind of us. So it's not only happened in the uh, with the people that uh, like previous people, people's attitude. This is our attitude as well. 
So we need to fix that we, uh, our attitude that we are not turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in calamity, rather we need to remember him all the time. If we take this smoke as a sign of punishment, people will plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this calamity from them and they will be uh, believers, but it will be too late then. So on the day of judgment, like uh, because if uh, the smoke is uh, close to the judgment, then almost judgment day is there. And uh, when they are going to plead that, okay, remove this punishment from us and we are going to believe. So Allahu Alam, uh, that is going to be very late to, uh, for them to believe now. And last ayah of the day. Anna, uh, how come or how lahum for them, adhikra, this is a reminder or this is a admonition or this is the lesson they can take or uh, lesson they can take heed on. Waqad and already, so whenever Qad we see uh, the meanings of because Qad uh, with Fil Madi, it brings the meanings in. Um, in the Madi uh, Kadib, um, uh, so close. So already uh, we, uh, in the translation, we can have uh, the word already. So already came to them Rasulun, Rasul Mubin, the clear one, the one who clarified. They themselves were very truthful and uh, they were making uh, everything clear for other people. So Anna over here is uh, Ismu Istafham asking a question. So giving the meanings of Kaifa. Lahum is our Jar Majroor Muqaddam. Adhikra is our Mubtada Muakhar. Then Waqad Ja Aham Rasul Mubin. This is basically uh, the whole sentence is the Hal. And uh, this Wow is our Wow Haliya. Qad is our Harfu Tahkik. Ja ahum fil madi file is hua hum is our nafulun bihi rasulin is the file and rasulum obin is the sifamoso fragment and ja a ya ji u so this is bab dara ba yadribu ja a ya ji u maji un or ja in so this is the conjugation and now Allah SWT is asking them how are they going to believe now while messenger already came to them and they rejected them? If they were not influenced by the prophet, we know the, uh, the prophet was among them and he was the perfect man. He was, they were uh, themselves calling him Sadiq Amin, right? So he was uh, the best uh, a person among them. Uh, and he grew up among them and he know him really well. Uh, still, they were not, when he, he, they were impressed by uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but when he uh, claimed for Risala, then uh, they were not uh, uh, happy from him. They were not happy about uh, 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 his personality anymore, right? So they were not impressed by his personality, by his message, by Quran and Hadith and how they, um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking how they can believe now. So basically this Anna has the meaning of Kaifa, how, and it has Inkar. Inkar mean, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there is no way that they are going to believe now. So they are just saying it, but it's not gonna happen. So if they did not believe in a clear message and a noble prophet, how is it possible that they would be convinced now? They would be convinced for a day or two and then they will go back to their way. So this was Sulis Mubin, one who clarified things for them, but they were not convinced and rejected him. And it can uh, apply both ways. Whether we take the opinion that this smoke was at the uh, time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the sign of uh, the Day of Judgment. So if we take it as a sign of judgment, 
then the uh, sunnah of uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the quran everything was present in this world right and people see that uh, muslim people around themselves so they know and uh, even uh, someone does not know about islam they can still ponder over uh, um, the signs of allah subhanahu wa taala the sun and the moon and even this uh, covid is a big eye opener for everyone right so the signs of allah subhanahu wa taala are left right uh, no one can say that okay we didn't realize that there is god right we need to just open our eyes so basically uh, this is what uh, it is uh, said that uh, the rasul the signs are all over here and uh, now they are saying that okay uh, they are going to take heed uh, there is no way that they are going to take heed now uh, while all these signs were already there and uh, in the last minute they are claiming that they are going to be the believers and now question for us that why people do not take heed right uh, what is the reason what is the barrier so basically the arrogance when the hearts are hard and because of uh, the kuf uh, uh, because when we do kufar right we are being ungrateful kufar is not only shirk kufar could be being ungrateful right so when we are being ungrateful for the blessing that we are enjoying from allah subhanahu wa taala and no one can say that i do not have any blessing we have our bodies which is a great blessing by itself the worth of million dollars we are carrying within ourselves right so if someone ask you for uh, uh, donate your eyesight to someone can you do that so this is uh, worth more than million dollar that we are having within ourselves so no one can say that uh, i do not have any blessing so everyone has is loaded with the blessing of allah subhanahu wa taala so when we be ungrateful then what happen our hearts are sealed by uh, allah subhanahu wa taala because he does not uh, like ungrateful people so we need to check ourselves is my heart hard or soft does it melt when i hear a reminder from my rab do i turn to my rab when some difficulty come to my way do i return to him in repentance and gratitude or do i argue with the laswana taala why me why laswana taala is doing that this, uh, to me right so some people uh, kind of argue with allah subhanahu wa taala when they are in difficulty so now sbila this is totally wrong we do not have any place to uh, question allah subhanahu wa taala's authority so allah subhanahu wa taala gift guidance to the heart who are soft kind grateful and sincere so we ask allah subhanahu wa taala allah taala uh, give us soft kind and grateful heart so we always remain grateful to allah subhanahu wa taala so with this alhamdulillah we are done our uh, session for today so inshallah see you guys next time with uh, new ayat so barakallahu li wa lakum fil qur'an al hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bi ayati wa dhikri al hakim subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika نشهد ان لا اله الا انت ونستغفرك 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 ونتوب اليك